Father Andrew Apostoli, a member of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. I'm here today to talk to you about my new book, which will be coming out soon. It's entitled, What to Do When Jesus is Hungry. It's a practical guide to the works of mercy. The works of mercy, both the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy, are very important because in a sense, they help us to fulfill our living of the gospel. Remember, we have to begin by having faith in the truths that Christ has taught us and that the church teaches us now. But at the same time, we have to live the fullness of the Christian life. And these works of mercy enable us to live out the kind of charity Jesus taught us. He said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And he tells us at the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, toward the end, uh, before the Passion Be account begins, he tells us that the Last Judgment will consist of our being questioned of how we have lived or failed to live these beautiful works of mercy, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, sheltering the homeless, and so on. So they are very important, but at the same time, they fulfill what Pope John Paul II frequently spoke of, and now even Pope Benedict XVI talks about, and that is that we are called to build a civilization of truth and love. In other words, we've got to show charity in action. It's not enough to proclaim the gospel. We've got to live that gospel, and the way we live it, carry it out in our actions, and reaching out to our neighbor in these very important ways where we can show mercy uh, to others, compassion, love, charity, forgiveness, and the like. So they are very important to the living of the Christian life, but also building up the civilization of truth and love. Well, I hope the book will help people to get started in living the works of mercy if they're not already doing so, by at least making them acquainted with what those works of mercy are. Remember, God made us with body and soul. The body has its needs, and that is, you know, the need for food, the need for drink, the need for shelter, for clothing. Uh, at the same time, there are needs that people will have, those who are sick, those who are imprisoned, um, and then when a person dies, the proper care for that per person's body. Uh, all of these things are ways that we can serve in um, helping our neighbors. So hopefully people will read about them. But also too, there are the, the spiritual works of mercy, which are very important for people to meet the needs of the soul. You see, th Jesus wants us to do that, uh, instructing those who are ignorant, those who don't know, for example, their faith, uh, in counseling the doubtful and um, consoling the sorrowful, and in many ways praying for the living and the dead, and comforting, you know, those who are in any need. So the, the, the spiritual works of mercy fulfill along with the corporal works of mercy our total concern to serve our brothers and sisters and hopefully the book will introduce people to what these works of mercy are. Many people may already be doing them and not aware that they are the works of mercy. Well, start slowly, I would say. You know, you, you don't, uh, you, you, uh, you know the old saying, you crawl before you walk, you walk before you run. And for people who are just starting off, and some people may have some fears to get involved in different ways, I try to suggest different ways for different people, because everybody's situation in life is different. People have different demands on them, family obligations, and so on. Or other people might be single and might have a little more time on their hands and freedom to be able to be involved in, in these ways. But uh, each person should do what they can. Um, you know, uh, when you buy a pizza, you, you don't uh, eat the whole pizza at once. You, you cut it in pieces. And so it is with the works of mercy, and you may have to do a little bit at a time in order to uh, find out where your level of ability to be doing these things is at. And, and by the way, also your practice of these works of mercy may vary. You may start with helping out in a soup kitchen, for example, and you may end up uh, teaching a CCD in a, in a, uh, or even working in the RCIA program for converts to the faith. 
So you never know how God will use your talents and ability. Um, what's important is to be able to say, Lord, I'm here to serve. You may see a lot in my book uh, reference to the Friars and the Sisters of the Renewal because that's part of our way of life. When we began our renewal, we uh, wanted to do two things. We wanted to evangelize by preaching the gospel and um, helping people spiritually. That, of course, spiritual food is even more important than the physical food. But uh, we can't live without proper physical food and or other physical needs. But uh, the community ad also adopted, besides the work of evangelization, our care of the poor. See, we looked at the life of St. Francis, our founder, and he preached the gospel. He, was a, he, he went around as an itinerant preacher at time, times. Uh, but uh, he, also, he also took care of the lepers and the poor. And that's what inspired us to want to work with the poor. So we had uh, shelters, we had soup kitchens, uh, food giveaways. And down in our missions, you'll see a lot of reference to uh, our work in the missions, helping the very poor and the destitute. Uh, all things that, um, in, in various ways, we have to try to be a little bit creative in being able to do that. And hopefully uh, the book will, will show that some of the real life experiences that I've reflected on in the book um, can inspire others. And you know, the Holy Spirit works in all of us. And he, he will, uh, he will guide, uh, guide you as long as you're willing to ask, Lord, what can I do for you? How can I serve you today? And that's what the works of mercy allow us to do. Well, I must say in my own ministry, um, I, I take my turns as all the friars do uh, in the metropolitan New York area. In our, uh, we have two uh, shelters there and uh, taking our turns working in the shelter. I have found that such a, uh, a very rewarding experience you know, um, these are people who are homeless, but they're they're people. They're they're very good people, and uh, they're just uh, a bit down in life. Uh, different reasons why they are homeless, and I think they deeply appreciate what you do for them. Not all will appreciate that, and I think that's I stress that in one of my uh, chapters uh, in the in, my, in the book is that, that not everybody will say thank you. Some people don't almost assume it, that they had a right to this or, you know, they sort of take it for granted. But that's not the ultimate reason why we serve, just to be thanked. We serve because we see Christ in the poor. You know, Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. And, uh, and that's been a reward. You know, um, St. Francis used to say, when you see a poor man, you see Jesus in his poverty. He said, when you see a poor woman, he said, you see the Blessed Mother in her poverty. Isn't that a beautiful thought? I often think, boy, I'd love to serve the Blessed Mother. I'd love to do something for Jesus. Well, they've got a chance by doing it for the poor. Your Mother Teresa used to say, don't serve the poor as if they were Jesus. She said, serve the poor because they are Jesus. And Jesus is taking whatever you do to them, he's taking it to himself. Well, I think the more personally we can get involved, I think the more enriched we feel, you know, by that experience. After all, it is a part of the living of the Christian life and a very vital part of that. And it, it does something to you when, you know, you have to spend your time or you have to make an effort. Somebody asks you, you know, we need a clothing room in one of the shelters and somebody would say, well, I need a pair of socks or I need a pair of pants or something like that. And you know, you, you got to go upstairs to the clothing room and you have to try to <laughs> search for <laughs> the size of the, the, the pants and, the, and you know, and the, the right kind of socks and so on like that. Uh, it's an effort, but you know, when you make that effort, uh, God rewards that. And that's, I think, a very important thing to keep in mind. You're serving Christ. Mother Teresa used to say that Jesus comes to us in the distressing disguise of the poorest to the poor. And, you know, many times I've had to keep that very much in mind, that that's who I'm serving. Even if it's somebody who rings the doorbell and wants a meal at one of our friary, the friary I live in, we have a few people that come by, 
they ask for meals or you try to fix them something um, we're not uh, giving them uh, you know uh, uh, you know the best meal in, in town but we give them what we can what, whatever we have and they're you know they're appreciative of in general I have to say Well, I'll tell you, if you're taking care of young children and elderly parents, you're already doing the works of mercy. After all, charity begins in the home, right? And, and so uh, you have to uh, do those works of love and mercy right there with the people near you. In fact, it would be kind of a strange thing to do to neglect them and their need. You're going to go up and I'm going to feed the poor of the world. You know, uh, start where you are. And, and sometimes those are the people who we take for granted. And they may very much need our love and attention. You know, the, we don't want to be strangers in the home. Uh, so uh, if people don't have the opportunity to go out, um, let them do what they can, you know? But I think the thoughtfulness, you know, uh, I think of a little, I saw a little episode once of uh, a very little boy, he was about maybe four years old, three years old, and he said to a brother who was about seven, could you make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And the brother did, and he said, well, he's feeding the poor. You know, that's a beautiful example of a work of mercy. So we can do, we can do right in our own home uh, these beautiful works to serve the Lord uh, you know, in a special way. Well, I, uh, spiritual works of mercy, uh, let's see if I can get them all. Um, <clears throat> there is to instruct the ignorant, to counsel the doubtful, to uh, forgive injuries, to bear uh, wrongs patiently, uh, to, um, uh, to console the sorrowful, to uh, pray for the living and the dead. And there is one more that I kind of forgot in there, but uh, uh, you read the book and you'll catch it, you'll catch that. Um, but uh, those works of mercy are in the long run even more important, you know. Remember um, the episode in the Acts of the Apostles when the widows uh, of the Greeks were being neglected in the distribution of food as opposed to the widows of the Hebrews and the converts. Uh, and, and you remember the apostles were brought into this discussion, this problem, but they said it is not right for us to abandon the preaching of the word of God to do the work of the ministry at the table. So uh, everyone, you know, has their mission, and especially those who are ordained to proclaim the word of God, have to focus on that, that spiritual, uh, that the spiritual works uh, of mercy in proclaiming the gospel, you know, has to uh, have a priority because the needs of the soul are greater than the needs of the body, all things being considered. But um, we don't neglect the body at all. But, uh, but we have to uh, be able to do uh, the spiritual works of mercy. They are extremely important. Um, bearing wrongs patiently, for example. Um, how many times we could avoid an argument uh, or, you know, a, a division in a family or in a, a place of work or, you know, if we were a little bit more patient in dealing with troubles that occur. I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, you neglect trying to work it out or you become a doormat. We don't want that kind of thing. But um, to bear patiently, you know, patience can allow for a heated discussion or a heated moment to pass. And uh, with patience, we can focus with more um, attention and uh, more calm on trying to settle uh, a situation that could be volatile, you know, could be explosive, you know, if, if, it, if we push and push and push. Ignatius Press, I'm very, very grateful to Ignatius Press for allowing me to uh, write the book on Our Lady, uh, uh, Our Lady of Fatima. In fact, they had asked me if I would do that. I had worked with them in conjunction with the, the DVD on the 13th day. It was a real pleasure doing that, um, and I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for what Ignatius Press does in making available so many wonderful works, especially the works of our Holy Father, Pope Benedict the 16th, now, great works that um, we can read and be enriched in our 
our Christian life. So I'm very grateful that they have, uh, that they are going to be publishing my second book with them on uh, what to do when Jesus is hungry.